Welcome to another episode of Perhaps Today Television. I am your host, Carl Cassell. And I'm your co-host, Ray Vassar. And we're coming to you again. Um, it's been a little while. Uh, we went back, kind of reformatted uh, how we would approach um, talking about the things of God. Um, we're still uh, um, focused on the return of Christ, but we realized in our conversations and listening to others speak that we're going to start uh, this uh, episode uh, really discussing um, what God's word means, the importance. Um, and this is called the whole counsel of God, uh, because many people, um, as you uh, remember previous episodes, um, uh, we dealt with um, uh, some of the, uh, for instance, uh, the gospel. Yeah. Uh, what is the gospel? And, yeah. and how some people only take a portion of it and call yes. that the gospel. And the gospel is, yes, Genesis to Revelation, but there are different topics that really signify all encompassing of God's word. And so we want to make sure um, that we do our due diligence and start at the beginning. And first talk about the importance of God's word and, and how we apply it to our everyday lives. Right. And I, I think that you hit on a major point is, you know, the gospel. And from its original origin of uh, the scriptures, uh, we have to understand that the word of God, as Isaiah 55, 11 says, the word of God doesn't return void. And what that means is, regardless of, the naysayers, you know, that we need to formally, you know, come, you know, stand against in this age we live in. But it's important that they get the whole word of God, not just a portion of who Jesus was, why he had to come, why he did what he did. Why did God have to even send him? Why did God even enter into humanity's fall um, and, and who he really is? And then the culmination of that, which is his return. That is the greatest news for us as Christians. It's not that it, we just understand the birth, death, or birth, life, death, burial, resurrection of Christ, but is that he's coming again yeah. to complete that. Yeah, because that will complete our salvation. That completes the whole, that, that fulfills all of Scripture, and that's why we, what we need to understand. So as we come down this line and approach from the original text, from the beginning of time as we know it, walking us through the entire counsel of God. You know, we're given the scripture, as you well know, in, in Acts chapter 20, verse 27, Paul said, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And then there's a warning behind that. He says, take heed therefore unto yourselves and all the flock over the, the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. So our desire is to give you the whole counsel of God. And as we come, we talk whether the topic's prophecy, whether it's just your relationship to Christ, which we encourage you, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that time is short and you can't wait till tomorrow because the more you wait, the harder your heart gets. But we're going to declare unto you, Lord willing and by his spirit, what the word of God is is driving humanity to and we hope you would take heed and as responsible ministers of the gospel you know we're overseers in one regard and god will hold us accountable even for what we're saying to you today so we take that very seriously and we encourage as uh, we've stated before interaction please if you have questions and you and, and as you're walking this out with jesus christ Please present them to us. There's things you don't understand um, that you've heard because there are many things in this generation that we hear. Uh, so uh, we encourage you to uh, put your questions forth to us on perhaps today TV. Um, we, we really encourage the interaction because we need to build each other up in the times we live in. And you can also find perhaps today on Facebook. Um, as perhaps today as well. So um, we, we want to receive your questions, um, your concerns, um, your exhortation. Um, without it, uh, we feel like we're, we're talking to ourselves. 
Um, and even if you don't um, um, say anything, we hope you will receive it um, uh, in your heart and, and understand that uh, uh, God is using us to talk to you. So we're going to talk um, about the whole counsel uh, of God and what that means and, and, and how was the Bible constructed where does it come from? Why isn't the word Bible in the Bible? Um, those are questions. Those are all comments, uh, uh, concerns that people have. Um, and a lot of times they come from folks who have been in church and who have never learned these things. Um, and a lot of other times they're from people who want to reject uh, uh, what the scriptures have to say. And so as uh, uh, Christians, we talk about being Bereans, we should be ready. Um, to give answers. We should have these things available um, uh, to teach uh, uh, um, and exhort those who are in need of, of answers. So, um, so talk to us a little bit about the origins and the history of the Bible, Ray. Well, from the beginning, I think we have to understand that, you know, back to the first century, it's beginning of time as we know it, the Bible, you know, the, the origins were God himself. Mm -hmm. He's the inspiration and influence to the men that put the scriptures together mm -hmm. in, in time from the beginning. You know, we know scripturally over 40 men mm -hmm. wrote the Bible, approximately 40 men of God inspired by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. wrote the word of God over a span of about 1500 years on seven different continents. Mm -hmm. Now there's no other book in history <laughs> that's written in that fashion that all drives together right. and there's no contradiction right. to many arguments that might be out there with if you're a universalist if you're an atheist you know you think the bible con contradicts itself well god doesn't contradict himself um and again that's just understanding so you know after the flood you know god had to start over he started with adam and eve the, the, the wickedness of men grew, he judged the world, and he started over with eight people mm -hmm. and repopulated the world. And then men began to write yeah. from that time on. Yeah. Um, so that's the basis, the starting point, and how the Bible was made up. And like you said earlier, the, the word Bible is not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that was a construct that came later on, uh, a term that was given to it. Uh, so... That's kind of a little bit of the backdrop. And and so how do we get our uh, um, canonized Bible that we have right now? Well, it wasn't completed until years later after uh, Christ's death and resurrection and ascension. Yes. Um, and so you had uh, uh, the texts of the Old Testament yep. uh, uh, that were obviously written on parchment, written on uh, papyrus, written on... Uh, um, things available to folks at the time right. uh, it kept for people to go back and, and, and fact check. But then you get the New Testament, which was written by uh, uh, those followers of Christ, which is why we have the old and, and the, the new. new. Yeah. The old was primarily written by the first five books, which we, which is called the Law or the Pentateuch, were written by Moses. Yes. Then you had uh, uh, the history books that were penned to talk about the, 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 the history, the rise of Israel and, and uh, the development and uh, a continuation of a nation of people who had come out of Egypt. Um, and then you have your poetry and wisdom books, yes. which are uh, the book of Job. Job. And then you have Psalms, uh, 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 Proverbs, song, uh, Psalms, Ecclesiastes. Um, written by David and Solomon and, yep. and, and Job. And then you have the major and minor prophets, yes. which um, for us who have a zeal for prophecy, uh, uh, the prophets, the book of the prophets, major and minor, are, are some of the prophecies that we deal with because they happen. They a lot of times talked about what it would be prior to Christ's first advent, right. even though many of them, did deal with the second advent as well. And then you have the Gospels, right. which are the first four books uh, of the New Testament. And then the Acts of the Apostles, mm -hmm. how this gospel 
uh, this is the teachings of Christ went out to the world. Then we have the epistles. It's teaching us how to live. Right. Um, and then we have the book that most people are afraid of, and that's Revelation or the Apocalypse. But it's really the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right. And that contains 66 books. Now, there are uh, uh, comments out there about forgotten books and books being left out on purpose. The reality is where we are today. So, um, uh, and I'm someone who I remember in college had a friend gave me, give me the lost books of the Bible. And I remember reading through some of them. One that I've kind of revisited here in the last few months of my life is the book of Enoch. Enoch. Yep. But the reality is, um, until we exhaust the 66, we shouldn't really worry about anything else. Right. There is more than enough meat in what we have available to us today right. that should provide uh, 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 teaching and understanding um, to last 10 lifetimes. Agreed, agreed. And you get on the key point, the 66 books, um, because you have all these additional books um, from, you know, Enoch, from Josephus, and all these other writers that really, in essence, aren't part of the canon of Scripture. So you, you, you can leverage those, this, uh, those uh, other writings because it helps put the Bible into some historical context and the times and what was happening in those eras that we can't really fathom in our own minds. So it gives us a good snapshot historically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that helps keep the original meaning intact yeah. without destroying the original content. And so you're absolutely right. So it's very, very important. Um, I, I think, you know, you hit on something and going through some of the, the text and when you understand the whole counsel of God and you get to these different variations of the scriptures and what we're talking about there is and we said I said it earlier there's no other book this is a number one seller bestseller of all time all time no matter what <laughs> truly <other> goat stat <laughs> the, of all time and so you know and you can't fathom the, the word of God one of the things that's important when you you lay out the whole counsel is understanding we don't need to defend it. Right. The Word of God defends itself. God mm -hmm. doesn't need you or I to defend the Word of God. What He does want in our faith and our trusting in Him is to defend why we believe it mm -hmm. to be true. Yes. And so that becomes our task to the world and to those that know Christ. And we want to bring it to a relationship mm -hmm. with God. Is we have to believe the written Word from beginning to end. Yeah. He never told John, you can read John in Revelation, you can read Ezekiel chapter 3, they never ate part of the book. They ate the whole thing. Eat the entire scroll. It's sweet in your mouth, bitter in your stomach. And so that's what we have to do as Christians. And today, part of the problem in receiving the whole counsel of God, understanding the historical context and how this thing is laid out by God, is people only take bits and pieces and not the whole you know, there's there's variations now where people say, well, we only want the Torah, and the law. Right. And then you try and bring in a little season, a little grace in there, and then you find yourself under two covenants. Right. Well, you can't do that. Can't do that. Uh, that becomes a struggle. It's a bit and piece. They only want this, and then we take a bit of this. It's not a smorgasbord no, for us as Christians. No. We It's just like an athlete. Yeah. It's a great example. You go to those big universities and you see an athlete. And what does that athlete do? They're on a strict diet. They they know they got to have certain proteins, certain you know limit the carbohydrates, and they got to have certain energy to play. And then you got the regular student over here. Mm -hmm. You know they just more go today. I'll have this and I'll have that. A little bit of this. More sugar, more sugar. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> the athlete over here at the Duke Universities of the world, they don't have a choice. Yeah. This is what they're restricted to. So it is with the Christian. Yeah. We're not restricted to. Having a smorgasbord saying, I'll take this and not this. No, we are restricted to this is our diet. This is the whole. we got to receive it. And so with that, um, there has to be a method and a means yes. and value placed on the studying of the word. <laughs> um, because I know I've seen cars where they literally drive around um, with the Bible in their back window. Well, if it never leaves there, who cares? Yes. You need to open it up and read it. Try to ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Um, 
And then, more importantly, to help it guide you into righteous living. Right. And so Psalm 119, 110, uh, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So it guides us. Yes. And, and it's interesting because when we think of uh, a, a, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, and that means it must be dark around me. Right. Which it absolutely is. We live in a fallen world yes. that... For, for any of us alive at this time, and I'm assuming every generation, it seemed dark and evil was uh, 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 progressing and coming in from all directions. Well, we know the day in which we live, evil is progressing. It yes. is multiplying itself. And so the only way we can stay uh, center focused is uh, uh, reading the word, which is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So um, it is of the utmost importance. Nothing can convince our mind mm. yes. of the inspiration of Scripture right. more so than the Bible. It's the only instrument um, that gives us everything that we need. Oh. All the way from uh, uh, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth to come quickly, Lord Jesus. Wow. And you're right. Um, and, I, and I think, to your point, it, it says a lot of different things. Um, in, oh, in, Proverbs in, yeah. Proverbs 30, verse 5, also talks about it. And part of that is the, the Word of God is pure. You know, to your point, and as Psalm 119, 105 breaks it down, the lamp we need. And the word lights where we step and where we shouldn't step. You know, it's clear to the Christian at the do's and don'ts of God. It's just like a parent. You know, you understand some things that your parents absolutely will not tolerate. So you don't do them. But there are some things where you got to make some decisions. Mm -hmm. And then along the way, your parents might come in and give you some advice and counsel and correct you here and there. But they're going to allow you to make those decisions. So it is with our relationship with God. But it's pure. And so this is another important piece unto understanding the Bible and how to understand it under inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's power for our lives and our relationship with Christ. It says every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Amen. So this is the call of the Christian to understand that every word of God is pure. And we don't live, as Jesus said, to in a temptation narrative in Matthew 4. We don't, man shall not live by bread or law, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So this is important to understand. If I'm going to understand the Bible, I need to understand that it's lighting my way, as you said in Psalm 119. Number two, that it's pure for my soul. It is redemptive power in God's word. And we have to understand that. So as I read through the scripture, everything's applicable yes. to me yes. in my relationship to God. Mm -hmm. Every single bit of it. Yeah, otherwise, why did you write it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, so as we look at the sacred scriptures, and of course, one of the pieces that uh, uh, we like to highlight is, again, the prophecies, the uh, the, the, the texts that deal with Christ's second coming. Yes. Um, but again, as we talk about the whole council, we want, we want anyone who hears us or reads this word to understand that the entire Bible is about Christ. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus says something uh, uh, in Matthew 21, 42. He says to the, his listeners, did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? <laughs> the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So Jesus is telling them the one that's going to be rejected has become the head of the corner, which we know he is the capstone. Hmm. Wow. That is for us. He is the pinnacle. Mm -hmm. He is the all in all, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. Scripture all points to him. 
Yes, and there and there's no parting of the ways of the waters when it comes to the Word of God. And if you're a believer and you're sitting in the church, whereas you're not getting a sense or getting fed the entire counsel of God, then you have to start to ask questions. Mm -hmm. You know, what am I really getting? Am I moved by the sermons on Sunday? Am I Am I moved to action? Mm -hmm. Because when I look at the scriptures and understand the Bible from beginning to end, it moves me mm -hmm. to action. Yes. I don't stay, I don't stay neutral. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Bible says you you cannot be, you either gotta be hot or cold. Right. You can no longer remain neutral when you come into contact with Jesus Christ. You either gotta be for him or against him. Really nice. But a lot of people like to pretend, and we've seen the pretenders in the Bible. They're identified. They eventually they come they come out. And so as a, as a Christian, to your point, you we have to understand number one the power behind this, but also, you know, why it was written for me. God didn't write the Bible so we couldn't understand it, but it does take us to be in prayer and to seek him with all our heart. And he promises us, if you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with all your heart. That's a promise from God. And if I'm sitting in the pews on Sunday and I'm not getting a sense of that, I'm not driven towards that, then I'm in trouble. Absolutely. I'm in trouble. And if you're a part of a local assembly, knowing that you are a part of the large body, the single body of Christ, yes. Yeah. That you have brothers and sisters that you are yoked with, <laughs> yes. that you should help yes. spur to love and good deeds, right. and vice versa. They should be doing that for you. So Jesus uh, 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 says here in Luke uh, eight twenty, excuse me, in Luke uh, yes eight twenty one, as they're telling him his mother and brothers are outside waiting as he's preaching said, my mother, my brother, are these which hear the word, but don't just hear, he says, that hear the word and do it. Mm -hmm. It is of the utmost importance that when we take the time to, to feast, to eat the bread of life, God's word, that it causes a response in our lives. Right, right. Because it can't be where we just kind of hear it and, you know, we don't do much else. I'll go ahead and use this yeah. if you want. Okay. Um, uh, we have to hear it and do it because if not, we're, we're lukewarm Christians. There's there's no point. There's no point to uh, just hear it and then kind of keep it in our own hearts. It will call the response to the people that you're you come in contact with every day. But more importantly, it will cause us to be a light, to be salt amongst those people, to show the love of Christ. On a regular. So Jesus is reminding us, those who hear my word, but also do it. Which I think it brings up to another point. In understanding the Bible, the first thing we have to understand is every bit of the Bible is about Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Yes. As the book of Hebrews, in the volume of the book, mm -hmm. it was written of me. Mm -hmm. And Jesus told his disciples that straight away in, in, in the Gospel of John, I believe it was chapter five. He talked about, hey, the scriptures speak of me, but you won't come to me as you might have eternal life. Every bit, and we just learned in our congregations, you know, the the, the, the two men on the road to Emmaus. They knew something, but they didn't because they didn't understand the prophetic significance that Jesus had to walk them back through to help them bring up to bring understanding to them. It was about him. Right. And this is where we get lost in the translations here today in Christendom because we don't understand that the entire Bible mm -hmm. is about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Everything points to him. Yep. And he's got it in the flesh. Yes. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, he says. Mm -hmm. So all of this is about Christ. So in order to understand the Bible, you got to understand that main point. An example of this is Exodus 16. Real quick, the children of Israel, in short, were in the wilderness. And Moses had them out in the wilderness. And then they were given manna. Manna. And in verse 15, it kind of talks about this. And, he, and when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, It is manna, for they was not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. 
Now you would think manna in Exodus that fed the children of Israel. Well, you parallel that out to the New Testament. And again, Jesus says, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. That's what felled the children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years that they never went without. It was Christ. They were feasting on Christ. And you can't leave any of it. Every man in this book, in this chapter, were told to get enough for you and your household as you need. Don't leave any. Again, don't leave it for the worms. In other words, don't leave it for the world. Eat the whole thing. It's about Jesus Christ. And we miss that, a lot of that. And that's just a small example of it being about Christ. Every jot and tittle of the word is about him. Well, and, 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 and that is so spot on. And I think bears repeating and a reminder. Every jot and tittle points us to the Christ, points us to the Messiah, the Savior of a dying world, the Savior of your soul. Um, so uh, we know why the scriptures were given. They were given as an inspiration. Yes. Yes. For our teaching. Yes. For our learning. Yes. Amen. Is the gospel true or is it a lie? <laughs> and that really is at the crux of everything. Right. So for Christians, for those who call themselves of faith, if you reject any portion of scripture, you are in inherently rejecting Christ. Yes. You're rejecting God. There is no portion of the whole counsel of God we can do away with. Wow. And that's how the Gospels are broken down. It's the good news and the proclamation of who Jesus was. And when you read this synoptic Gospels and this canon of Scripture, you see Mark was written first. That was the first book of the Gospel. Luke, he appealed to the Gentile audience. And he also wrote the apostles, the, uh, the Acts of the Apostles. Matthew had more of a Jewish audience. John was really a culmination of, uh, really a discourse on the various teachings of, uh, of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you bring, put them all together. These are like news reports, mm -hmm. all from a different vantage point, but all saying the same thing and drawing to the same conclusions. He is the Word. He was from the beginning. Yes. And in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And so this is talking again about Christ. Do you believe the gospel message? Do you believe this good news? But a lot of people today in, in conclusion stop short of the whole council. And here's what they say. God became a man, born of a virgin. He lived a life, a sinless life. He came for the purpose of taking the sin away from the world. John 3.16, popular verse. And then he died. A sinner's death. Even worse than that, he died the death of the cross, a curse of God. Not for our sakes, as the book of Isaiah says, but, but you know, not for his own, but for our sake. And then he was buried. And then after three days, he rose again. Stop. <laughs> That's where the gospel message stops in just about, I would project, 80 to 90 percent of churches today. That's where it stops. Yep. That's not the complete gospel. Right. The complete gospel is, wait a minute, not only is he resurrected, not only did he ascend to heaven, but he's coming back. He's coming again. Are we ready for the coming of the Lord? And if I don't receive and believe the whole counsel of God, I won't be able to discern because the lamp that I have that's supposed to light my way is a little dim. As, as Matthew talks about, uh, well, it's wait a minute, I don't have enough oil in my lamp. And it's an oil you can't purchase, by the way. Because the oil represents the Holy Spirit. You can't buy that. You can't buy the things of God. So very important. And so in, in conclusion, um, as we talk about uh, the whole counsel of God and what it means, we are, as uh, followers of Christ, we are dealing with the prophecies and in light of Christ coming back. But we are also very cognizant and want to remind each and every person who hears this how important it is to deal with the entire scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Uh, because if, if we study the word as we should, we would have a, a depth of our mind, breadth of our mind, 
um, nobility of character, mm. stability of purpose mm. that's rarely seen uh, um, uh, in and around the neighborhoods, the cities, the world in which we uh, uh, reside. Um, you shouldn't use the scriptures just for profit. So I know some folks out here who are contrary are going to say, well, there's some of these pastors riding, flying in Lear jets and uh, <laughs> living in $10 million homes. Um, that is not the bulk of those who follow Christ. Now, if individuals are getting paid because of the books that they're writing and speaking engagements and all of those things, that is between them and God. The reality is, is this gospel is free and should be given uh, 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 at any point to anyone who desires to hear it. And we want and would encourage you um, to be uh, uh, someone who speaks the word in and out of season because we have a, a dying nation, a dying world who is uh, in dire need of hearing the gospel. Um, and we have to be ready yes. um, uh, to speak that. So uh, we thank you again um, for joining us uh, on perhaps Today TV. Um, Ray and I, um, this is obviously um, something that is near and dear to our hearts. Anytime we can talk the scriptures, um, talk about Jesus coming back. Um, we do this just between ourselves for hours on end. We knew it's important um, to make sure uh, those who we can't personally reach out and touch um, can at least hear the sincere uh, word of God. And so we thank you and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you back next time. Again, uh, please like, uh, follow, uh, the most important comment, any questions or thoughts that you have, leave them for us. Find us on Facebook. Uh, find us on YouTube. Um, we are here um, to, to spread the gospel message. And so we thank you for joining us today.